Welcome back, minders, from here and there and everywhere. Glad you could join me. How is everybody doing? Well, I'm going to do a cloudscape today, and this is going to be a little bit unusual for me. Working in this Arches sketchbook, one of the Arches field journals of old, they no longer make. I'm going to be using colors from this set, Mind of Watercolor set, but only three colors dioxazine purple, ultramarine blue, and neutral tint. So it's going to be a blue purple sort of gray cloudscape. And I want to make it very dramatic. And I'll set the stage for you a little more here, but first I'm just going to pre-wet this paper with my Sterling Edwards uh, blending and glazing brush. Now what I'm doing is I'm going to do very dramatic sky. Well, I'm going for something very dramatic. A lot of darks, a lot of lights, very solid, kind of cumulonimbus, what I like to call ice cream castle kind of clouds. But this wash uh, will be very wispy. And in reality, it's just a base. Because, as the title suggests, I'm going to use a lot of colored pencil. And I'm really excited to do this because uh, this is something I haven't done in a while, and I haven't used colored pencil to this extent over watercolor in a while. But as I'm doing this wash, let's, let's just talk about that. Uh, you saw me blotting with tissue. That's just to stop the runs and to stop the softening in places, give it a little bit more of an edge to places. But essentially, I am thinking in terms of a base that I'm going to draw on with colored pencil. This is a very common uh, mixed media technique, by the way. This is done, there, there's artists you'll find right here on YouTube that do a lot of this. And it's a match made in heaven. I mean, watercolor just makes a great base for colored pencil. I'm talking about actual colored pencil. I'm gonna use uh, Faber-Castell Polychromos. Uh, they're an oil-based pencil act pretty much uh, very similar to wax-based, like Prismacolor, but they're permanent. They're not watercolor pencils. But I'm going to work a little more on this base to give myself something to color over. And as the wash dries, I'm just popping in little areas of contrast just to sort of give those lighter areas more solidification if you will more definition this uh sterling edwards blending and glazing brush is a great blender as the name implies so what you see me doing is popping in some dark tones just where i want little pops of contrast and then taking the blending and glazing brush and blending out the back side of it, the, the, the dark side of it. That's usually done with a damp brush that has no paint in it. Brush works great for that. I use it a lot in skies. But I'm getting uh, some of the definition that I want in these clouds. I'm liking the color. Uh, again, it's it's uh, varying between more purple, more ultramarine, and a good bit of neutralization with neutral tint. So there's really not a lot to talk about with the color. And I could really stop there. Uh, that looks great. I mean, as a watercolor sky, I really like that. So that color scheme will make a little more sense as I add the colored pencil. It's going to uh, dovetail really well with those colors. But we're going to get into the colored pencil. And I just want to explain a little bit here because this is a really kind of a long, tedious process. I kind of jumped through it. But uh, I, just something that I wanted to do, I, I did a lot of this as an illustrator, as a professional illustrator, mostly over airbrush. But the idea is the same. You lay yourself a base of colors and values. Um, and then you go back in with the colored pencil 
add definition you can you, you can make the strokes visible or non-visible like visible like hatching like linear or you can blend them very softly and smoothly and I don't think I have a video here on YouTube where I've ever done this. In fact, I'm sure I don't. I've been wanting to do one for a while. So this is going to have a lot of smooth blending, a lot of uh, burnishing techniques, which if you're familiar with colored pencil, burnishing techniques uh, are very useful. They help you smooth out the colors. Now, you see the white pencil there. Whenever you see me use a white pencil or a cream colored pencil, I'm usually burnishing. And that's just stroking over the colors you already put down to help smooth them out. Or blend them if it's more than one color. And the goal here is just to add more solid shapes. That's it. And some color, some additional color to the piece that's not in the sort of blue purple gray scheme see here for instance and, and there's my reference up in the right corner see the colors i'm not going to go quite that bright but uh the oranges the pinks i want to add those and that's going to be added with color pencil and i'm not following that reference uh exactly i uh, made my own clouds but i'm using that for structural clues and ideas uh, about how to get the characteristics of these clouds. But as this goes, you're going to see the shapes and the forms just become more distinct, more rounded and kind of solid feeling, less wispy. This is all a study for me, uh, not so much uh, for the clouds, although it is that, but for the media. It's just a technique I wanted to get back to that I haven't uh, done for a while. Here I'm adding more of those orange tones. Now I can even go up here in this dark area with a white colored pencil and add some wispy fingers coming off the main body of the clouds. So that's what I'm doing there. Yeah, I did a lot of this back in the day. It was a popular illustration technique with a lot of uh, illustrators. I think it was made popular by Drew Struzan. Um, and his look was very different. But if you're familiar with the movie poster uh, illustrator Drew Struzan, he used a technique like this. Not with watercolor. It was, I think, acrylic, probably airbrushed acrylic, uh, acrylic inks, I'm thinking. And then standard color pencil on top of that but there was a whole range of things you can do with this technique so i wanted something low pressure in terms of drawing and proportion and you know getting all of that just that i could just stretch my legs again with this technique that i've been away from for a while and really with watercolor uh, it's the same as if you were doing this over airbrush or acrylic. Um, the reason it was done over airbrush so much is that airbrush added a really nice tooth. For instance, if I painted just with uh, acrylic on like a canvas, the tooth is really slick. Uh, now you can go back over that with airbrushed matte medium to add tooth. In fact, I did that. I mean, I've done this technique all different kind of ways. But if you're doing it over watercolor, you don't have to do any of that. The paper gives you a nice tooth. This is cold press paper. Uh, probably for a smoother effect, I should have done it on hot press. But again, it doesn't matter. This is all a study in technique for me. A warm up. A warm up to what? I don't know. But just coming back to a technique I really love. Various yellows you'll see, pinks. You can really burnish, if you're familiar with colored pencil art, you can really burnish with any color, even a dark color. Uh, but a lot of times it's, it tends to be done with lighter colors or a colorless blender. I didn't use a colorless blender. 
Instead, I did the burnishing with lighter colors, the light blue, the cream, the white, uh, even the light yellow, just depending on where it was. But just a fun, easy time, you know, using this technique and uh, just sitting down and rendering, you know, rendering shapes. And, you know, aside from the techniques used with the pencils, it, it's a real study in values, adding value ramps, value gradations, and rendering shapes, making parts of the cloud look rounded, and rendering a light source, just making it look cloudy, <laughs> really cloudy, cloudy. Fluff it, tease it, pull it. A long, sort of tedious process, though. As I as I went through this, I experimented with different colors. I experimented with grays, layering over the actual color. Experimented with like which pink or which orange gave the best effect. So, uh, in many respects, this was a study. And finally, I'm going to add some white highlights. I'm going to do that with this uh, Faber Castell white uh, pen the pit white pen. Now, there are other choices like Posca pens or even like gel pens uh, that would be whiter and more opaque. But I actually like this one for this because I didn't want it super, super white. And this you can build up. And yes, uh, if you're thinking, could I have done this with gouache? Absolutely could have done this with gouache. But I wanted to try this. Um, and I just like how you can build it up. I can even stays damp for just a, a few minutes or a few seconds. And I can, t when you see me tapping it with my finger, I'm blending out the bottom edge of it a little bit. But I just wanted some, some nice rim light and highlights on some of the edges of those clouds, the, the brightest highlights. And this was a great way to do that. It starts out not quite fully opaque, kind of translucent. And the more you put down, the more opaque it gets. It's a, it's a good little pen. And that's really all it needs. And I really enjoyed this. So, Bethy, I'm gonna die. so yeah, if you've got some colored pencils, uh, get them out and give this a try. I know a number of you out there already use this technique, you've told me. Thanks everybody, appreciate you watching. Thank you so much patrons for your support. We'll see everybody in the next video. Bye-bye.